Welcome to Art and Yoga from Home, brought to you by Munson Williams Proctor Arts Institute in Utica, New York. I'm Mary Murray. I'm the curator of modern and contemporary art. It's my great pleasure to be part of this program, and I'm very pleased that you're here as well. I'll begin with a brief chat about a work of art in the museum's collection, a sculpture by Melvin Edwards, and at 1030 we begin yoga practice. I've also included a poem that you might like to read in the interim. And if you're able, would you please make a donation? That will help support the program. Thank you very much. Now this coming Friday is June 19th, Juneteenth, sometimes called Freedom Day, the day of celebration for African Americans. It has its origins in post-Civil War Texas. June 19, 1865, Union soldiers arrived in Galveston and announced the end of the war, but also the Emancipation Proclamation, which had been issued two and a half years earlier on January 1st, 1863. At the time, there were approximately 250,000, a quarter of a million slaves in Texas. Many of them had arrived after 1862 when Union soldiers captured New Orleans and slaveholders in the Deep South, Louisiana, Mississippi, and so on, migrated westward with their slaves to the farthest reaches of the Confederacy, Texas. Juneteenth is characterized by family celebrations. Imagine being the first wave of uh, slaves who were freed, who had been so brutally separated from their family members. Um, and these traditions um, moved north and west with the Great Migration, the movement of Black Southern Americans um, in the early part of the 20th century who traveled to Los Angeles, Detroit, Chicago, New, New York, Newark, and other industrial cities looking for work. If you're interested to learn more about the Great Migration, um, I recommend Isabel Wilkerson's wonderful history, The Warmth of Other Suns. So these traditions that started in Texas spread throughout the nation, and they include family gatherings, as I say, um, a moment to assess progress in civil rights, and that's a very timely subject, especially this year. A celebration of African American history and music, spirituals, food, culture, which from Texas, of course, means barbecue, and teaching uh, younger generations about these traditions, these histories, and encouraging self-improvement and uplift. Melvin Edwards was born in Texas in 1937. He grew up in the Fifth Ward. His family lived uh, in Dayton, Ohio for a few years, but returned to Texas. And uh, he moved to Los Angeles to attend college. He went to City College for two years and transferred to USC, where he played football, as well as was an art major. And along the way, he learned welding. And his welded metal sculptures, an ongoing series that began in 1963, comprise this series called The Lynch Fragments. 1963, of course, is the year of Martin Luther King Jr.'s March on Washington. And um, Mr. Edwards remained in Los Angeles until 1967, when he, as a, an artist, moved to New York City, which at the time was the mecca of the art world in our country. In 1970, he returned to creating lynch fragments in protest of the, uh, the Vietnam War. And in 1978, he 
um, revived the series and it's ongoing today. The museum here at Munson Williams Proctor owns four of the Lynch fragments, two created in 1980 and uh, two created in 1994. Edwards um, talks about the Lynch fragments as um, within the tradition of welded metal sculpture, an important uh, aspect of 20th century sculpture with Picasso early, earlier in the century and works by David Smith, a quality of drawing in space. Um, and the Lynch fragments um, as a collective title, he writes, and this is from the website, an artist statement on the Museum of Modern Art's website, wherein Edwards says, the Lynch fragments title, I felt that if I was going to label the works collectively, I wanted to be sure that it was taken seriously. And the most serious thing I could think of was lynching. This was a way of keeping us in line. My work had to be as strong in opposition as all of that. But he also describes his work, which is invariably abstract, like South African election that we see here, um, as being um, more poetic, less literal. Uh, the materials that he uses, like barbed wire, and here we see chains and hooks. There's some rebar and some crossed, crossed steel bars that could look like prison bars. Um, he says that um, the associations using the title Lynch Fragments is very much uh, toward slavery and oppression, but he wants to expand that idea into a more complete notion of African American experience. For him, he saw barbed wire on his cousin's farm in Texas and on farms in upstate New York, for instance. And as a blacksmith, he understands that chain was originally developed to be a stronger kind of rope. He said a chain can be used to anchor a ship or it can be used to bind a body. He um, didn't have a lot of African-American visual artists uh, to look to when he was a young artist, um, but of course there was music. And so jazz was a very important influence for him. The idea of putting together disparate elements to create a, a whole composition um, was very much on his mind um, when he began creating these Lynch fragments. Now, um, this particular work of art, South African Election, was done in 1994. And that was the year that South Africa had its first universal suffrage. All adults, black, white, brown, were able to vote in this general election, which brought Nelson Mandela, who had been 27 years a political prisoner in opposition to the terrible apartheid policy uh, as president. So it was a great moment of celebration for African people and the African diaspora after so many years of oppression. It's a great moment for us to reflect on the possibility that we now face at a crucial vol volatile moment where conversations about racial justice can happen moving forward to create a better country. And I thank Mr. Edwards and other artists like him who are willing to commit themselves and their work to do uh, the hard work for the rest of us. 
before I sign off, I'd also like to um, point to my Pride Yankees cap because June is Pride Month. And um, I'd like to honor LGBTQ artists, designers, dancers, musicians, poets. Um, imagine how much our lives are enriched by the work of Alvin Ailey and uh, poets like Frank O'Hara. Um, here in Munson Williams Proctor, Museum, we have works by historical figures, Marston Hartley and Charles Demuth, and contemporary artists Tom Miller and Doreen Quinn. Our lives are much better for uh, a richer experience. Until next time. <laughs>